Hey YouTube, Aaron Robbins here with another fully beta tutorial. Today we're gonna to look at all the major tools in the Cubicle 2.5 tool palette. Um, so we have Cubicle open here, we're just gonna click the plus sign underneath Deer's belly here, and we're gonna go into uh, the scene or overview or lots of different matrices can be displayed here. A matrix in Cubicle refers to a container of voxels that sort of make up one object. And this, the first mode you go into, is where those are all displayed. So you can see up here on the Create tab, we can create um, voxel matrix primitives. So these are not voxels themselves, rather they are collections of voxels that make up primitives. And all of these things do just what you think they do. So here we have a cube, and it's important to note that this is not a voxel itself, but rather a collection of voxels. And I can see that by going into matrix mode by double clicking and seeing there are all the voxels there. But here over in world view, scene view, overview, um, total universal view, whatever you want to call it, um, this is where I can move around different packages of voxels, and those packages are called matrices. And so you can see that over here in the info tab. Um, it's the type of thing I have selected as a matrix, and I, it's named box right now, and um, there's some information about it. So just keep in mind that there's two different modes. When you're in here, you can get back um, by double clicking or by using this arrow here at the top to kind of move back through the hierarchy. This becomes more important when you um, put objects into compounds. Um, but we're not going to get into that right now. So that's just, keep in mind, that's sort of your breadcrumb trail from the overview, the overworld, the big place, into um, where your actual voxels are. Okay, so your scene, when you started up, might look like this. It might have had an empty matrix um, right there. If you have that, that's cool. You can just double click on it to go into it. If you don't, then you can just click uh, on the primitive sort of area here. You can go ahead and cl uh, select Create Empty Matrix. We'll make ours 20 by 20 by 20, doesn't matter, and we will call ours um, Ralph, because that's a pretty good name for a matrix. And so now we're in the matrix, and the first thing you want to realize is that this grid container does not, these grid um, areas here don't represent one voxel. In this case, they represent four, and if you want to change that, you can go up to View, Work Area, and then choose Grid Properties, and from four, you can change it down to one, so that one um, area equals one voxel, and then we're ready to get started. So we have the Move tool here, which moves stuff around. We can't move anything because we don't have anything. Um, so let's create some stuff. The first row is basically has to do with selecting and moving. The third row has to do with selecting color and moving. Um, this one has to do with cubes, and this one, these tools didn't fit anywhere else, and we'll get into them in a second. So let's create some voxels. We'll start with the Pencil tool, and with all the tools here in the Major Tool Palette. All of them have three different modes, kind of no creation or edit mode, the slice mode, which allows you to operate on a single plane, which you can move, or you can click on this border over here, move it up and down, and the auto mode, which sort of tries to guess, uh, it doesn't even guess, it, it tries to operate on the plane in which your mouse cursor is touching. And we're going to use that one predominantly. Um, so just keep in mind there's those three modes, no mode, slice mode, and auto mode. Why is that important? Well, it helps you create things quicker and easier. But also the reason is that it, in some cases, slightly changes the functionality of the tool, and in some cases it drastically changes the functionality of the tool. And so you will end up thinking, oh, this tool's not working, it's broken, it doesn't, didn't select this contiguously. And what's really going on is that you were in auto mode, and so it was limiting the selection or limiting it to something that was in the plane of where your mouse cursor had touched. Um, that becomes less of a problem in your slice mode because you have this huge visual indicator that you're in slice mode. It becomes more of a problem in auto mode when you're not sure um, what's going on because you forget that you're in auto mode and then the tool thinks you think it's doing something kind of crazy, but it's not. So just keep that in mind and also uh, we have one more section that all the tools have which are these modifier buttons here, these modifier modes here at the bottom that allow you to change the way the tool is operating or change sort of the properties of the tool. So let's get started creating uh, Pretend we don't we aren't any mode, we'll start creating the pencil tool. Uh, is very similar to the add voxel tool, but it's also really, really different, which is not a very helpful phrase. But let me show you some of those differences here. Just think of them that they're kind of paired, but they have a very sort of different way of adding voxels. Uh, the pencil tool, if you notice, if we have enable walls turned off and we're not in any mode, we actually can't draw, we can't add anything. To add something, we either need to go into slice mode and start adding voxels or we need to be in auto mode and have a voxel already in the scene. Since we are in auto mode now, and there are no voxels in the scene, we can't add any. The way we get around that is we can just enable walls. So the enable walls setting, anytime you see it in any of these tools, it says it's going to allow you to complete the operation, it's going to carry the operation onto one of the bounding box uh, walls. So now we can add a vox, some voxels here using the pencil tool, and notice that um, with auto mode turned off now, even though enable walls is still selected, I cannot add pixels out. I can't pull them out into the space. I can only add them 
on the walls. No way to get them off unless I switch into auto mode. Then I can bring them off the wall there. Okay. The other thing you want to notice is that the voxel in which the operation is starting on is the one that I have selected because this is one of the major differences between uh, the pencil tool and the add voxel tool is that this operation is started on top of an existing voxel and carried out that way or up that way. And with add voxel tool, which only has trace stroke, which I'm going to go over in just a second, but it only starts on the side of, I can't start on an existing voxel, so it's only adding two voxels that are already there. So I can't select that one, I have to add it to the edge there, okay? So those are the two basic things with that one. The pencil tool also does the coloring, uh, so the important thing to note with that is that I can both color this row and add to it in one operation, so I click and keep dragging, um, and or I can just, you know, color single ones. Uh, and stuff like that. So trace stroke, let's go over that really quickly before we get down to some of the other options. Let's go ahead and fill in that just because it'll make me feel better. Um, I don't know what we're building here, nothing. So what trace stroke does is if I left click and try to add a bunch of uh, voxels, notice with enable wall I can't do that now even though I'm in auto mode, I can't add voxels. I can only add two existing ones. So I'm going to turn enable wall back on so I can just draw on the wall here. What trace stroke does if I left click and draw, I just drew across the whole uh, bounding box there, you can see there's some significant gaps in um, the voxel showing. Cubicle still knows where my, where my mouse was, it kept track of that, and as soon as I left click and let go, or left let go of my left click, um, it filled those in. So I left click, drag, there's some spaces, but then I let go and it fills them in. If I turn trace stroke off, it's more of a what you see is what you get. So I'm gonna do the same thing, drag across, but this time it didn't fill them in. So that's what trace stroke does. And we'll get to the other ones well, I guess we can do the other ones right now. So let's go over what uh, mask, no, let's do masking when we get to the selection, that's better. But let's go over, nope, that's it. Let's switch to add voxel, and notice with that one, I cannot paint existing voxels because the subtle difference between the pencil tool and the add voxel tool is the add voxel tool only adds, it's an additive operation. This one is sort of a things that are existing and some, this one's only the and some part. So I cannot paint these voxels, but I can add more of the selected color um, to them. And I can draw out just like the pencil mode, um, but I cannot pull this uh, voxel out in this direction. That would be a pencil tool operation because I really want to select this voxel and continue it on. This one I'm going to add to the side of it and then pull it out in this direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to the next tool, which is the uh, eraser tool. And we'll go ahead and turn off auto. And with auto turned off, we can just go ahead and select a few uh, voxels at a time. We'll also turn mask off, and we'll get to that in a second. So just like a pencil tool, except for it is erasing things, I can erase um, just down this row. With auto turned on, um, you get you know the ability to select which plane you're working on and drag straight down. Um, with trace stroke turned on, it would have actually deleted that cubicle, it, that voxel it left behind. So those still appear to be there, but as soon as I let go, they're going to be gone because trace stroke is on. Um, Pierce. Uh, only works in auto mode. You can see how it's uh, deselect or grayed out there, so you can't do it. You need to be in auto mode or slice mode to use Pierce. And what Pierce does, you'll see Pierce on a lot of commands. What Pierce does is it tries to carry out the operation all the way through um, till it finds a space. So if I use the erase tool and Pierce on this plane here, it's going to try to carry that along this line until it finds a space. Um, and you have to have it selected for it to work. So there you go. And so it'll delete all these blue ones. Um, and that's basically how uh, Pierce works. Pierce does respect a selection, um, but only if mask is selected. So if I had just these four selected here and I wanted to pierce through to the end of just the selection, not to the end of the empty space, um, that will work, but you need to have mask selected for that. We'll probably look at that when we do the selection tool. So that's the first row. Uh, the second row we'll skip to because it's coloring and it makes more sense to um, do that Let's get rid of all these guys here. You know what, let's do control A, which selects everything, and hit delete. All right, so let's move on to the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool, uh, you'll notice that we're in no mode here and we can do nothing, we can't add, uh, we can get out of matrix mode, we can't do anything. Um, so we'll go into auto mode and see that we uh, still can't add uh, anything because we don't have enable walls selected. So with auto on and enable walls, we can add a rectangular box uh, of voxels to our wall. Okay, what about if we turn enable walls off but leave auto on? Can't add. 
what about if we turn slice on? So we can add in slice without enable walls on because the slice is kind of the wall in this case. Uh, in auto mode, to add a rectangle if none already exists, that's the big caveat, none have to already ex none have to exist. Um, we need enable walls and in auto mode. So we'll go ahead and just draw out a rectangle. This is a click and release operation that will be important later when we move over to the box tools. Some of the tools in the cubicle have are like three three click operations. This is just a click, drag up where you want, and uh, let go. Um, so in auto mode, if we turn auto mode off now, uh, it doesn't work at all. Even if we turn enable walls off, nothing you can do. You can't add or select um, with the rectangle tool unless you're in auto mode or you have auto, uh, and enable walls selected or whether or not there's voxels already in the scene. So what does Pierce do with the rectangle tool? Well, you can see if we turn Pierce on and we draw out a rectangle here, um, it's not going to span across, like give me an also an extrude function there. It didn't actually do anything in that particular um, example. But what it does do is if I have the paint a different color selected or um, something like that, and I have Pierce on and I draw a rectangle here, it painted those rectangles that I had selected here, but it also pierced or it also moved the command through until it found an empty space right here. So it is handy, the pierce tool is handy with, with the rectangle tool for drawing. Um, it also respects mask if you have a selection going on um, as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the box tool. With the box tool selected, you can do nothing if you are in no mode, not slice or auto, and you don't have enable walls selected. Uh, with enable walls selected, even if you're not in slice or auto, you can begin to draw a box. The box is a three sort of move operation. The first left click and drag defines the base shape of your box. So in this case, 14 by 10. When you, left, uh, when you let go of your left click, um, you're still using the tool, um, but now you're setting depth. Um, so there you go, that is a three click. It's a left click and drag to set base and then release and drag out to set um, depth and then one more left click to confirm um, what you did. So we can go into auto mode and get basically the same behavior here when no voxels are already in the scene. All right, so with auto mode selected, uh, let's go ahead and select a different color and you can see that I can select um, just on a face here and then that's uh, let go and then gonna pull up there. So that was, uh, set the base, let go, drag out to pull it out this way, click again to confirm. You'll notice if I turn auto off uh, and move over here, uh, it basically does the exact same thing. I'm not entirely sure that there's any difference between auto mode being on and off um, when you're using the box tool like that. Box selection works pretty much the same way. It has the same options for enable walls. We already have voxels in our scene, so we can select. Um, and again, it is a left click to set the base, base of your selection, then let go and drag to select the depth of your selection, and then left click again to uh, confirm your selection. Now if I hit delete, uh, I can look in there and um, see that there is a hole created there. So the next set of tools, the resize does not resize your model, it resizes your work area. And the extrude tool, it only works in, not like the home or the base version of Cubicle, it only works in the one above that. Um, but let's go ahead and hit Control A and clear that out. And get off the resize tool, just like the move tool to do that. So let's go ahead and create a quick uh, like little disc shape here. We'll just put two voxels there and then one and then two voxels there. And then uh, that's okay. That one's not though, like that. And we just want to extrude that up and we had, let's pretend we had uh, other colors on the outside of it because that's realistic. And then uh, go ahead and sample that color with the eyedropper, a tool we did not color uh, cover and put those two back there to make our thing. Okay, so now what if I just wanted to extrude this disc out of this area? Um, so what you would do first is use the magic wand tool to select that. And the magic wand tool, good time to cover the selection tools. Uh, the marquee selection uh, is like every other marquee selection on the planet. Uh, in auto mode you get access to enable walls and piercing the selection, which means if you have a cube uh, and you have pierce, it will try to carry your selection through the whole model. Um, and enable walls, auto slice, all the same thing. Uh, let's go to the move tool in a second. 
So let's go back to Magic Wand. Uh, it has contiguous, meaning that when I select it, the colors have to be touching. If I add more of the same color uh, over here, and the blue, Back to the magic wand tool. So with contiguous selected, when I select that, the colors have to be touching. Uh, with contiguous not selected, um, it will just grab all the voxels that have the same color um, there. So what if I only wanted to extract just this? Well, now I, I have both these things selected, so we'll turn on contiguous um, like that. We'll left click anywhere off the screen to deselect. Click on that. Um, we have to have contiguous selected. Okay, and now I can use the extrude, extrude tool to extrude out um, this selection here. All right, so with our little disk selected here, we're gonna switch over to the extrude tool and I'll show you a little bit of a funky behavior with that. What it's extrude is supposed to do is only extrude the um, voxels that I have selected, which allows you to extrude some very uh, interesting patterns. And so that will work um, just like this. We'll go ahead and we're in auto mode. I'm going to go ahead and just um, select over or put the base over where my selection is. I'm going to let go and then I'm going to move the mouse up to set the depth. Then I'm going to left click to confirm and it did exactly what I would expect it to do. Um, the problem is that I'm going to go ahead and unselect everything. And just reselect that just so you know I have it selected. I'm going to go back into the extrude mode, but this time I'm going to send my uh, selection, my base selection, to cover part of this matrix that has no voxels. So you can see I'm grabbing some empty space over here. And when I do that and set my base, it does not respect my selection here. It just pulled them all up, and that is because I selected the empty space. If I go ahead and just restrict that selection to where there are voxels, um, it will respect the selection. That is regardless of whether or not you have auto mode on or off. It doesn't matter. Um, so I turned auto mode off. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I don't have any pixels. It did that. Auto mode's still off, but I'm going to go include some empty area, and it did not respect my selection. So that is uh, the extrude tool. The last tool we have to cover is the split tool uh, right there in the move tool. So the move tool is awesome because um, you can actually move parts of your model. You can move the whole model by hitting control A, selecting the move tool, and you can move those within the matrix. Um, and you can also move different parts, which is exceedingly helpful. So we'll go ahead and just deselect everything. We'll use that magic wand tool again, and then move, and we can move just that guy around there. Last one is the split tool, which you may or may not have access to. We're gonna go ahead and delete uh, Ralph or whoever that was, and we'll go ahead and create this cylinder here. And nope, let's go ahead and make it a different color so that we can illustrate this a little differently. We'll hit okay. And so as you'll see, when we, when we go in here, the split tool doesn't do uh, anything. We need to be back in the world mode. And then what it does is it allows you to actually split this matrix up into lots of other matrices. So it looks like an edge uh, slide loop cut tool in other 3D programs. So we can go ahead and just put one there, reselect now. This is two matrices and I can slice this one here. I can slice that one there, and notice that it did not pierce through all these other matrices that I have created. So now if we go back here, we can see that we have uh, multiple matrices that we can edit independently that we created just from one thing. So we can go in here and create that one and all that. So that's every uh, tool and setting that's in here. Is there any that we didn't cover? Uh, trace stroke, mask pierce, we got them all. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we're going to be doing more on Cubicle and Unity. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.